Hey everyone, I am Jay, better known as Take. I got an interesting one for you tonight. You notice this is a bottle of wine. This is unusual for Whiskey Raiders, but I promise that there is a point. This right now embodies something that's happening a lot in the winemaking industry. It is 100% to blame uh, on the whiskey industry. Right now, uh, there's essentially a surplus of whiskey barrels. Whiskey barrels are everywhere. You've seen barrel-aged coffee, barrel-aged caramel, barrel-aged tobacco, barrel-aged everything in between. Soy sauces, uh, even honey. And now we have a barrel-aged wine. So. Uh, before we go ahead and get into it, I'm just going to pop this guy. Uh, if you uh, don't drink a lot of wine, uh, you probably don't see me talk about wine a whole lot. Wine is something that I drink for fun. really like a Grenache, really like a Riesling. Uh, champagne and sparkling, sorry that's making a ton of noise, are also favorites of mine. But overall, let's go ahead and give this guy a pop. Very nice. So, standard cork. Standard old wine opener. If you don't have one, you should get one. It's about the most important tool you can have. Really simple, they're like six bucks on Amazon. Learn how to open a bottle of wine. Let's go ahead and pour this guy a little bit and we'll talk about it. This is coming from Robert Mondavi. Uh, Robert Mondavi is a producer out in California. This is their bourbon barrel aged Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, it bears the 2019 vintage, it's 14.5%. ABV. They don't tell us, uh, you know, specifically uh, what kind of bourbon barrel, and they don't tell us how long it's rested in the bourbon barrel. It has some really pretty, actually, pretty nice color here. We'll give it a little bit of air. Overall, I want to say that this is a sub $25 bottle of wine. 14.5% is pretty strong. That's going to be a pretty full bodied red. Cabernet is already a full bodied wine. Uh, that style of grape is big and bold. There's a reason people eat it with big uh, meats like steak and roasts and all that good stuff. Uh, this has been resting for a minute. It doesn't need to rest forever. Uh, some people like to decant for a million years. I think that's more important with older wines, maybe some more expensive wines, wines that are uh, really extracted or meant to take on a lot from the barrel. Uh, on the back label here, we'll, we'll type this up, but We'll see if you can see it. There's not a ton of text. Uh, essentially, it gives us some tasting notes. We won't talk about those because we don't care. We'll, uh, we'll grab our own tasting notes. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon blends, California winemaking, blah, 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 Southern tradition, bourbon, whiskey, barrel aging. I don't think that's Southern. Like, Kentucky's not super, so, oh, whatever. Uh, select lots aged in bourbon whiskey barrels. So, we get a uh, email address to check it out. Uh, and that's really it. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Why why are we seeing a lot of this stuff? There are extra bourbon barrels. Uh, wine barrels are very expensive. They aren't always the easiest to get. And honestly, bourbon's super hot right now. If you found uh, this channel, it's probably because you were interested in whiskey. The whiskey industry is booming. And so it makes sense to carry that popularity into other products as well. So on the nose, this does very much deliver. This is like a big on the blackberry light soy so it's savory it's fruity it's big it's dry it's definitely cabernet plum i'd say there's a little bit of vanilla this doesn't strike me so much bourbon forward this certainly isn't barrel forward there's a char those big like caramel vanilla notes cinnamon that we would get in a bourbon very much cabernet on the nose Honestly, it's pretty nice for $25 or under. Uh, lots of fruit, very quick, very quick to the upfront of your palate. It is light on tannin, I would say medium, medium minus. It is light on viscosity. It's not a rich syrupy wine. Uh, overall, it's not heavily over oaked. It's not super tannic. It does blend tons of vanilla in with those blackberry notes, cherry notes, the things that you would expect out of Cabernet. This is a big red wine, if you think about it. This is full of jammy notes, blackberry, strawberry. There's a little bit of char, there's a lot of vanilla. It's very vanillin heavy. Uh, I think that's probably most what the barrel is contributing here. Uh, another sip. It's got a pleasant finish. Honestly, it's a quick finish sweet again you need to like sweet wine that are low in tannins it doesn't taste artificially sweet it's not jammy it doesn't feel like it's dosed or it has a bunch of extra stuff if you've ever had camus and kind of felt that like big red cola notes that flat dr pepper 
uh, purple, <laughs> just the color purple, all those extracted fruits. Uh, this actually tastes a little more natural than that. Uh, you know, the bourbon barrel has a lot of different influences in coffee. It adds like a big lactic character. Uh, in, in syrups, it tends to bring down the viscosity a little bit, which is nice. Now, in this wine here, it's sweet. It really makes it easy to enjoy if you're not a Cabernet fan. This is probably a good entry for you while you get used to those big tannins. This doesn't have the drying sensation across your palate. If you have a big woody Cabernet and you have a big sip, you'll feel the moisture kind of wick away from your palate and it'll leave your tongue, you know, kind of your tonsils back your throat. This doesn't have this uh, much on the jammier side, sweeter, easier to enjoy. I would put it more in the casual camp. Not that I think that there's uh, more serious wines and more casual, but this you can just pour while you're cooking, hanging out, talking. If you don't want to sit down and just like focus intensely on your wine, this is a great relaxing wine. So overall, I don't think that the bourbon barrel crushes it. It's not too bourbony if you're worried that it tastes like bourbon. I, I think it mostly just imparts a lot of vanilla. It's an easy to drink Cabernet. I think it's a fine value for the price. I wouldn't put this up, you know, as a specific pairing. You know, if you're cooking a filet and you want those big traditional Cabernet notes, this won't do it for you. But if you're looking for a nice pour, a weeknight, maybe you have some people over, you're just trying to have a nice glass of wine, will you work? If you're trying to convince some whiskey drinkers to get into the wine field, or maybe you have some wine friends who are trying to, you know, kind of coax into the world of whiskey, this can go both ways. It opens a lot of conversations. You know, you can talk about, uh, it's just a different kind of barrel that this wine is aging in. But anyways, totally pleasant. Totally fine, not offensive in any way. Certainly not the most complex wine, but for the price point, it doesn't need to be. And we'll try and cover more of these. Bourbon barrel aged wine is coming into style much more. We're seeing a lot of it. We're seeing blends. We're seeing single varietals that are all being matured in a bourbon barrel or finished or aged in some way. So we'll hit some more. If you like this video, please give it a like. Drop us a comment. If you've tried a bottle of wine like this, a bourbon barrel aged bottle of wine, or maybe anything else, curious about you honey fans out there, uh, best way to help support the channel is to let us know what you like and don't like. We'll come up with more of this and share it with a wine friend or a whiskey friend you know. So, once again, I am Jay from Whiskey Raiders, better known as Take. You can find me rating <laughs> not wine for now, but drinking it in my spare time and musing about it on YouTube. Here, you can find me at whiskeyraiders.com as well, and I will see you for the next video. Thanks, guys.